Um, so, Steve's talk has been in the works for about 14 months or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we did the, um, the February lightning talks before lockdown, and then Steve was going to expand on that and talk a bit more about uh, the accessibility topic. Um, but he thought, why don't I delay it until it's Global Accessibility Awareness Day? Exactly. Yeah. So, 14 months later, here we are. Over to you, Steve. Uh, thank you. And now we see if I remember how to use my computer. I do. Yay. Great. Um, okay. Welcome. Hi. Um, I'm going to be talking about, oh my god, which yes, it's supposed to sound like, oh my god, it's a joke. I know it's not a funny one. I'm okay. Um, but I'll be talking about accessibility. So I know this is the Wellington Open Source Show and Tell. So there'll be lots of telling, lots of anding. Uh, we're in Wellington, so I've covered that. Uh, one of the tools is open source, so that seems good. Reasonable? Okay, cool. Agenda. Um, first of all, I'm going to explain <coughs> what is GARD. Uh, second of all, I'm going to talk about why is GARD important. Uh, and then third of all, because I'm a bit of a hippie, I'm going to talk about how can we make the world a better place uh, using software, because you know, that's what we do. But still, better place. Can everyone hear me? I can hear myself. Okay, cool. Number one. I mean, number who? Number me. Uh, who am I? It's <sighs> a big question. Um, still figuring it out, but I know some of it. Some of it, my name, Steve. Hi. Uh, other bits, I'm a front-end developer and UX person. Um, and at the moment, I work at uh, Totoro, just down the road. Down the road, up that way, thank you. Uh, down the road that way. Um, and I kind of do mostly front-end stuff, not a lot of UX stuff at the moment. Um, but uh, one of my many hats is accessibility. So, and it's a thing that I'm very passionate about, as you'll find when I'm jumping around like this. Um, and if you want to find me on the internet, probably the best place is naga.coza, which is my personal website. And yes, I am from South Africa. Well, I was born in England, but anyway. What is God? You may have seen some of these posters on the wall. We'll come back to that. Um, God is Global Accessibility Awareness Day. So, is there anyone else apart from Grant work at Catalyst? So what, what happened on this? This is amazing. <gasps> Nice. Did everyone catch that? Drop in events, simulated disabilities, practice using a screen reader, that kind of thing. Oh, that's awesome. We should talk. Um, so, GARD happens every year and it's been going since 2011, which means dun dun dun, decimal bias. This is the 10th year it's been going, which is great uh, on the one hand, but also, oh my God, it's been going for 10 years. Uh, it needs to be going for 10 years. It kind of does. So, that's today or tomorrow if you live in the rest of the world. What's it for? Question. So that's, that's for you. So what, what is it for? Uh, no one from Catalyst answer, please. That's cheating. <laughs> Anyone else? Any ideas? Guess? No bad answers? Right? <laughs> the clue's in the name. Uh, yes, cool. And somebody from Catalyst, what do you think now that you've done some stuff? So call to action. Nice. Call to action. Yeah. So uh, like for me, I'm thinking, cool, it's like talking about it, thinking about it, and definitely learning about it. Um, accessibility and its BFF inclusion or inclusive design, you know, thinking about how can we get more people using our stuff. Okay? Okay, cool. Uh, so that was what is GARD, Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Number two, you are here. Why is GARD important? Well, why do I think it's important anyway? I have three things that came to mind, uh, and I'm going to tell you all of them. I hope that's okay. Another question for you. Um, how many people in the world have disabilities? So just for kind of, uh, so you don't make a, a like three or a 700 million. Um, world population is about 8 billion, give or take. So how many, uh, have, a, have a think, have a number in your mind. Now telepath, no. Somebody shout out some numbers. What do you think? Three, 200 million. <laughs> Good, wide-ranging so far. A any other guesses? Uh, 
Depends, true, but I'm looking for a number for now and then we can qualify it afterwards. Uh, anyone else? Eight billion. Eight bi well, that's, that's a bold <laughs> answer. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah. Well, very quickly, it depends, but roughly speaking, according to the, uh, the WHO, not the band or the doctor, uh, the World Health Organization, about a billion have at least one disability. So why, why did I put this extra in brackets here? Yeah, some have more. Many people have uh, two or three or more disabilities, and they stack, which means it's, it gets worse as you get more. Um, or it gets more difficult as you get more. How many people here have disabilities? Uh, and again, for context, population about five million? Go team. One million? Uh, do you say one million or one billion? One million. million. Okay, cool. Uh, anyone else? <coughs> Eight hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand. Any more? Keep going. Keep it dropping. No. Uh, okay, it's so not an auction. That's fine. About a million. Uh, this is a number from 2013 from Stats NZ, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, and again, at least one. That it's approximate. I mean, it might have been 936,000 or it might have been 1.1 million, but it's, it's around there. Um, that's what I've always said. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. I think we do a good job of looking after people who might want or need some help. Big one? Easy measurement? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's probably, uh, you know, like most things in life, it's complicated, so it's probably a combination of those things. Uh, and again, uh, at least one. Uh, I think the stat that they had was about half. So about half of these people have two or more disabilities. That's, that's quite a thing. Quite a thing? Damn reckons it's a thing. Okay. So why is it important? Because there are a ton of people in the world who have disabilities. Um, it's very relevant to them and to us. Number two. A couple of years ago, I discovered this uh, social model, or what people call, or some people, what I call today, apparently, uh, social model of disability. So a disability occurs when someone's ability comes into conflict with a barrier created by the product. If I'm in a wheelchair, I cycle around, woo, great, I can move around, I have an ability to move around the world. If I come up against some stairs, that's a barrier that's stopping me from moving. Does that make sense? Like, if it was a ramp, I could go up. I can move. Great. Um, the classic definition is more of a, like, a physical model. Cool. Like, you're blind. I can, I can say you have this disability. But it's not the same as saying it's not about the person. It's about the world and the interaction with the world. That's what makes the disability. Does that kind of make sense? Kind of a related thing and another kind of way of looking at it. Think of disability more like a spectrum than a binary. It's not have disability, don't have disability. It's more complicated than that. It's more nuanced. It's more kind of gray and, and squidgy. Hmm. Is that a good word? I oh, probably shouldn't use that one. Squidgy. Yeah, are we, we're, vote, we're thumbs up squidgy. Cool. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for the support. Uh, so there are many types of disability. Here are four that, uh, for me, often mind as kind of quite uh, to understand and to, to figure out. Um, auditory physical, visual, there's lots of other ones, right? Especially if you're coming at it from this social, level, this definition of um, disability equals ability plus barrier. But here are some kind of easy to kind of think about ones. Let's have a think about this one. I like this one. So this is a very gentle activity, no, uh, no cardio. Uh, it's arm day, but it'll be, it'll be gentle. Um, so like raise a hand or nod your head or, or blink really vigorously. Um, <laughs> If, if you or someone you know is blind, a smattering of hands, like five, six people. Thank you. Same, same, uh, same preamble. Uh, low vision or poor eyesight, perhaps from old age or from being a presenter about 40-something and working in technology. But a few more people. Nice. Eh, maybe like three-fifths of the audience, approximately speaking. Cool. What about, uh, raise your hand, nod your head, slash blink vigorously, uh, if you or something you know is colorblind. Hmm. Cool. So is, I hope you're kind of looking around a little bit to see, like, there's quite a lot of hands going up. 
I think I think this might be the last one. Um, raise your hand slash nod your head slash nod vigorously. Uh, if you or someone you know has ever been outside on a sunny day holding a very shiny screen for them and struggling to read what's on it. I, I mean, I know it's hard to run and we do live in Wellington, but the, we see occasional sun. Uh, and it's like, oh, I can't, what, what is this? So hopefully you saw that that was a bit of a kind of spectrum, right? A visual disability, ability coming into a conflict with a barrier creates some form of disability. Why is it important? Because disability affects me, affects you, and it affects lots of people that know. And uh, apparently I should include this bit sometimes as well, like, oh, and because it's good for business, uh, which is true. Number three. Another one, which is, here's a, how's this for an extremely broad sweeping statement? Almost every home page has some accessibility problems. Boom, foot down. Don't I think I'm lying? No? Okay. Well, I mean, I am. I mean, I'm not. Um, I might be exaggerating slightly, but not a lot. Why do I think this? Or why do I say this? Uh, there's a company called WebAIM, Web Accessibility in Mind, go to days. Um, Every year, they do a massive survey of one million websites. Uh, they look at just the home pages and they check for accessibility errors. So this is not like a manual process, it's just only automated checks. So it's kind of bumping along the surface a little bit anyway, right? They found that 98% of the million pages that they surveyed had at least one problem. And they found that Every page had about 60, do I mean about, do I mean at least, maybe mean about, I don't know, had about 60 errors. So you, maybe you're thinking, ah, oh, these numbers are ridiculous, it's probably more like 60%, uh, and maybe the number of errors is more like 30. That's, that's cool. Um, the important thing for me from this is, it's a lot. It's not like, eh, it's one or two, it's like, no, it's a, it's a shit ton. So why is guard important? Why is it important to keep raising awareness about accessibility every year, because lots of pages have lots of accessibility errors. So that was number two. That was why is guard important, and in case you did fall asleep during that, it was because many people have disabilities, and many websites have many errors, accessibility-related errors. Um, but something that would, um, somebody accessing a web, somebody with a disability accessing the website would not get the same information as somebody without a disability. Um, an automated tool was run against it and said, oh, this is missing a thing. It should have a thing. There is no thing. Where is the thing? <clears throat> and under number three, how can we make the world a better place? I'll talk about uh, some specifics of those errors. Hmm? So what I like to do is to try and use that web aim million as a guide. So they've got a list of all of the kinds of errors that they found. Um, and I like to go, okay, cool. Well, lots of websites have these. Maybe these are good ones, popular ones. Uh, unpopular? Impopular? Uh, maybe these are good ones to look out for. So I tend to do two things. Number A, check for errors. Number B, I oh know it's not a number. Number B, check for meaningful text content. And we'll, we'll cover what I mean by that in a moment. Number A, check for errors. So what, what do I mean by that? Uh, for example, missing link text or button text. I know you thought it was your time off now, but no, it's another question. Why might link text or button text be missing, and why might it be a problem if it is? An image button. Wait, did you learn this today? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can't use a screen reader if it doesn't say something. Yeah, you don't know what the button does, and if you can't see it, you certainly don't know what it does. Yeah, when and like Grant said, uh, when links or buttons are images, um, if you haven't done something special to the image, which we'll come on to in a moment, then it appears as an empty link or an empty button. And if it doesn't have any text, how are you supposed to know what it does? You can't tell what it is. You can't tell what it does. So I was so annoyed. I made my voice go heep, like Michael Jackson. What else? An another what? Uh, another error that occurs is uh, missing labels for form fields. Why am I a missing label? for a form field to be a problem? Not a trick question. Oh, don't know what to put in. Yes, you haven't added a thing. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, anyone else? Oh, oh, great. Please fill this in with something, but we won't tell you what, because it's a fun game. Um, 
Yeah, then it's definitely wrong. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, put in your password. Oh, no, that's the username. Shit. Uh, yeah, and again, like, you can't tell what it is. Like, uh, okay, I'll put in the information that you need, but I don't know what, so I'll just type in my favorite color and my favorite band name, and that will be that will be fine, hopefully, but it won't be fine. Yeah, the, the underlying uh, thing for all of this is high-quality HTML. Oh. What else? Uh, missing alt text for images, which is how we say images in England. Uh, why might missing alt text be a problem? It's kind of related to all the other ones as a clue. Don't know whether the image is meaningful. Don't know what the image is. If image, yeah, good, nice back referencing. You've been paying attention. Thank you. Uh, if the image is inside a link, you don't know where the link goes. Great. It's the same thing again. Like you can't tell what it is. It's missing information. It's this weird thing. Um, and uh, Val, as you said, thank you. Uh, bonus points. So you get the bonus points. You get two bonus points. Yeah. Um, if the image is inside a link or a button, then that link or button has no name. It's what, what is it? I don't know. Do you know? Does anyone know? No, nobody knows. Uh, definitely not me. One more for luck. I think it's one more for luck. Uh, low color contrast. Why might low color contrast be a problem? It's a sunny day. Nice. <laughs> you are paying attention. Well done. Is it because Pierre's not here and you're just kind of like, oh, wish he was here. Uh, good. Any, anyone else? Anything else? Yeah, if you're, if you're colorblind, uh, uh, or a particular, any kind of colorblind, you might not be able to see it clearly or at all, possibly. Anything else? If you forget your reading glasses. Yes. Yeah. Oh, look, they have this designery website with light gray background and slightly lighter gray text that I cannot read at all because I'm old now. That's great. Thank you. Um, yeah. You probably can't see it, or many people won't be able to see it. And if you can't see it, you can't read it. Okay, so that was a bunch of what's, a bunch of the errors, like what are these actual errors that we're talking about. Um, thankfully, this is the easy bit. They're like, okay, cool, that was a lot of errors, Steve, because that's my name. Um, cool your jets, how do I actually do anything about this? Uh, well, there's lots of ways. Uh, my favorite way, because it's easy and I'm lazy, is to run a browser extension called Axe, which is by a company called DQ, who are a big accessibility uh, company. Uh, and it's for Firefox, for Chrome, you just install it, press go, and it scans a page for errors. Great. Straightforward, right? No need to install, um, no need to kind of add anything to your CI or your CD or anything crazy. Just like, no, it's install a browser extension. And the reason I like the browser extension and not like a, a CLI thing or something bigger or fancier is because it puts me in the seat of the user. I'm looking at a thing. I'm using a thing that is what people will be using. I'm testing it there. I'm not testing it in the code. And for me, that's always getting closer to the user is always a good thing. Number B, which you may remember from earlier. Check for meaningful text content. Um, so what, the what of the meaningful text content, what am I talking about? Links that have click here as the link text, for example. Why might click here as link text be a problem? You don't know what it does. Like, where does it go? Click here. Click here for what? Uh, that's, I mean, that's it. Yeah. It's terrible SEO. It's like, oh, you're ranked number one for click here on the web. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Life goal achieved. Um, you don't know where it goes. Also, it doesn't make sense out of context. If you're a screen reader user, you kind of tab through the page. You hit interactive stuff like links, and you hear, click here, click here, click here. Like, what is that? That is rubbish. It's like you don't even care. Um, boop. What else? Uh, buttons. Yay, buttons. Uh, buttons with generic submit text. Why might submit as button text be a problem? Are you sensing a theme with this kind of Q&A, kind of two for ping pong? Cool, 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 cool. Exactly. It's not clear what you're submitting. Is it search? Is it something else? Um, what does this button do? Like, I don't know. Um, it's and it's not just an excessive, for me, it's not just an accessibility concern, same with the link text. It's just bad UX for everybody. Um, imagine if on Trade Me, every button said submit. 
No, it, it breaks your brain, right? You want to know what is the action that I'm doing. Like, what, what am I trying to do? I'm not trying to... Uh, sometimes submit is correct, as in your example, or um, as in submitting an application or something. Sometimes submit is the right word, but normally it's not. Open, close, show, hide, place, bid, buy now, etc., etc. Another one for number B, and meaningful text content. An alt text of image.jpg, like of the file name of the image. Why might image.jpg as alt text be a problem? Does, it, uh, does anyone uh, know what alt text means? Will somebody shout it for me? What, do, what, is, it, what is alt text? What is the, oh. Yeah, the, the caption, the alternative text. If I can't see this image or if this image doesn't load, please browser display this text instead. So with that in mind, uh, why might image.jpg as alt text be a problem? Yeah, it doesn't tell us what's in the image. You don't get the same meaning as the image. The point of alt text is to be a replacement for the image. It should convey the same content and the same information, uh, the same purpose as the image. Uh, and image.jpg doesn't do that. I mean, I've actually chosen quite a good example. Well, nah, that's a bit rubbish. But imagine it's like a, a system-generated file name, you know, like... Uh, photo underscore 2117. It's like, oh, that's really shit. That does not help at all. So how, how can you check for meaningful text content? Well, if you're a proper nerd like me, you'll be using a screen reader. Um, but that's like a bit of a big barrier to entry, and it can be quite fiddly, uh, even, if have you, even after you've been using them for a while. It's still like a bit tricky sometimes. Um, so again, a browser extension, uh, which I'm afraid is only available for Chrome. Don't know why. Um, by TPGI, who used to be called the Pacello Group, but I think they wanted to sound like futuristic and cool. So not only did they do a, a three-letter acronym, but they added a tiny I at the end, which I think definitely extra cool points for that. Um, but their thing is called the ARC Toolkit, and I can't even remember what ARC stands for. Probably also something really cool. Um, but you run it, and it kind of scans, again, it scans the whole page, but it groups all of these things together. So it groups links together for you, so you can read down all of the text. It groups headings together so you can read down all the text. It groups buttons and images together so you can read down all the text. And I find that as a, a really useful um, shortcut, kind of cheeky way of doing something similar, um, of getting all the text content very quickly, very easily, but without having to uh, get stuck or get tripped up on using a screen reader. I like shortcuts. OK, so that was number three. How can we make the world a better place uh, by being a hippie? Um, so the answer was by running some tools and fixing some bugs, uh, kind of like the rest of our jobs. A quick recap. Um, talked about what is GAD, Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Uh, why is it important? Because lots of people have disabilities, and lots of websites have problems, uh, including ours, including mine, including yours, probably, a little bit. Um, not judging. Uh, and how can we make the world a better place? Run a couple of tools, the browser extensions, quick to install, quick to run, um, and they, lots of them will even give you hints about how to fix stuff or uh, ranking, you know, like this is a critical error, this is a moderate error, that kind of thing. I'll post these uh, in the meetup as a comment, these links and these slides. Um, guide website, stats, uh, the web aim, median, the X browser extension, and the arc browser extension. And now I'm really out of breath, and that's it. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, so this tool, does, uh, you, the question was like, uh, does this tool kind of help with tracking for like vision impairments? Uh, and you're right, it kind of doesn't. This is a lot about the text content. Um, the previous one, Axe, does check for color contrast, which is something, uh, which is good. Um, but you, and you also mentioned the magnifier, kind of zooming in, making text bigger. So I mean, a, a cheeky way of doing that is just, you know, um, control or command, plus, plus, plus. Boof, make it nice and big. And if your site is responsive already, uh, if you're lucky, it'll handle a lot of that for you. Uh, slight sideways, yes? A kind of like little mental trick that I try to remember when doing this kind of thing is to take it a little bit further than you think. So you kind of control plus plus, you're like, oh, cool, that's bigger now. Just do it again, plus plus. Um, and then you think, oh, this is like really ridiculous. Like, who would do this? But a lot of people will. So taking it a few steps too far. Um, and another thing that I try and keep in mind is like it doesn't have to be perfect. 
doesn't have to be an amazing or identical experience. If somebody can still use it, maybe that's okay for now. Yeah, so, so do, do we at Totoro do testing with uh, users with disabilities? At the moment, no. Um, but I've been there a year now and we're kind of like ramping up all of this stuff. And this is one of the things on our, uh, we should do this soon kind of list. Um, but that's, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, user testing and usability testing in general. Um, and even just mixing in one or two um, users with disabilities, a screen reader user, for example, uh, in amongst the normal pool of other people that you would have recruited anyway, I feel like that's a great way of you know, getting a bit more information. I always find that usability testing is just like, wow, people do that. Um, yeah, always, always surprises me and sometimes in a good way. Normally not. So do, does improving the accessibility uh, make a major improvement to the SEO? Is that correct? Mm. So yes, um, because it's a lot of the things that we've talked about here as there's an overlap with usability. So better link text, uh, like Grant was saying, being ranked number one for a click here on the internet. Yes. Um, the button text kind of not so much, uh, but another popular thing is good headings, which I, I didn't mention here. Um, but having properly nested headings, properly marked up headings, not a div with styles, but an H1, H2, H3 elements. Um, screen reader users, for example, that is one of the most popular ways of navigating around a page. You know, give me a list of the headings. Uh, no, no, yes, cool. Dump, jump to that section. And obviously, well, not obviously, but that does give you a better structure for the page, which means better search engine rankings. Yeah, not not using a, a take, unplugging the mouse or uh, covering up the trackpad and just trying to navigate around by the, with the keyboard is uh, a very interesting experience. Um, even if you've done a good job, like even if you um, haven't done anything funny and you can access everything with the keyboard, often you're like, cool, I'm going to get to this bit over here. Tab, 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 tab. Oh shit, missed it. Shift tab, shift tab, shift tab. And like, if you've got a lot of stuff on a page. Navigating with the keyboard can be a bit of a pain. Um, obviously, sometimes you need a lot of stuff on a page, but um, then there are other ways around it, like skip links, little links that are in page links. Jump me over all of these filters. Jump me over all of the categories. Jump me to the main content. This oh, pizza. Okay, bye. Um, shall we break for pizza? And you can ask me while I stick cheese in my face. <laughs>